Now in this video, we're going to learn how to solve for the power in different elements of a circuit. Now this is going to be part one. We're going to have a part two of this video. Now I want you to know that we're not going to be using any resistors, capacitors, or inductors. We're mainly just going to be using what we know about passive sign convention and different sources to calculate the power in each element. Now the question reads, find the power that is absorbed or supplied by the elements. So they want us to find the power. Now we know power can either be absorbed or supplied. Now in electrical engineering, we have different equations to find power. Now for DC analysis, the three main equations we're going to use is going to be power equals, we can write this as current times voltage, IV. We can also write it as I squared R, which is just current squared times the resistance. Or we can write it as the voltage squared divided by the resistance. So these are the three formulas we're going to use in, in DC analysis to calculate the power. Now let's look at this question. They want us to find the power that is absorbed or supplied by the elements. Now when we look at this, we can see we have three elements. We have this current source. We have this box. We're not sure what's in this box, but this is just an element. So we just label it one and we have this voltage source. Now they want us to find the power in each one of these elements. Now, when we look at our formulas, which formula do you think we're going to use? Well, we know we don't have any resistor. So the only formula we can possibly use is going to be the first formula, which is current times voltage. So I'm just going to start with this element here. I'm going to write, the equation power for the first box, I'm just going to write one. So the power for the first box is going to equal the current times the voltage. Now, what is the current that is flowing through this element? Well, one thing we must notice anytime we're looking at a circuit is to see whether that circuit is a series circuit or a parallel circuit. That's one thing I like to do. When I look at this particular circuit, I see it is a series circuit. Now we should know the properties of a series circuit. If we have a series circuit, we know the current flowing in that circuit is going to be the same across every element. So even though we do not have a current that is directly labeled on this particular element, we know the current flowing through this element is going to be the same current that is flowing through this element, which is the same current flowing through this element. Now we have a current source and a voltage source. When we look at this, we look at the current source and we can see that this current source produces a two amp current. Therefore, we know the current that's going to be flowing through this element is going to be two amps. So we know this current is going to leave this source and it's going to flow this way, right? And this is going to be two amps of current. Therefore, when we plug into our equation, we know the current is going to be two amps and the voltage across this particular element is going to be six volts. When you perform the multiplication on this, 2 times 6 is going to give you 12. Now you must remember the unit for power. The unit for power is going to be watt. We're just going to use W to represent watt. Now we're not done yet. We must write whether it is absorbed or delivered. Now because it is a positive power, we know that this element is going to be absorbing power. So I'm just going to write 12 watts and underneath it, I'm going to write absorbing. So 
So the power in the first element is just going to be 12 watts absorbing. Okay, now let's look at our second element. For our second element, we're just going to choose the 14 volt source, right? So let's find the power in the 14 volt source. We know the equation is going to be I times V. Now when we start to substitute in the values, we know the current flowing through this 14 volt source is going to be 2 amps because this circuit is in series. So we're going to have 2 multiplied by the voltage, which is just 14 volts. When we solve for this, 2 times 14 is going to give us 28 watts. And this element, because it is a positive power, is also going to be absorbing power. So remember, anytime you're solving for the power and you get a positive answer, that means that particular element is absorbing power. Okay, now let's do for our third element, which is going to be this 2 amp current source. I'm going to do it right here, right? We have a little bit of space. So we have the power of the 2 amp source. We know the formula to calculate power is IV. Now the power of the 2 amp source, we know the current is going to be 2 amps. We know the current is 2 amps, right? We know that. Now before we continue, I like to put a pin right here, right? Because this is very important that we must understand and always have in the back of our minds the principles of the passive sign convention, right? Now when we look at this current, we know this current is flowing in this direction here. Now when we look at our voltage across this element, which is a current source, we have a plus minus, right? And the current is flowing this way. As we can see, the current is going to be flowing this way, which means the current is going to go in the negative terminal and then to the positive terminal, which means this is a voltage rise. Anytime you have a situation like this, when the current is entering the negative terminal, we're going to treat it as negative current. Hmm. So I want you to really get your head around that, okay? If the current is flowing inside of a negative terminal, we're going to treat it as negative current. So all along, for the first element, for example, the current flowed in the positive terminal. So we treated this as a positive current. In the second element, the current will continue this way, and as it continues on this path, it will then flow in a positive terminal once again, which is in the voltage source. So we left the current as a positive current. But in this situation, in the third element, the current is now going to flow in the negative terminal first. So because this is going to flow in the negative terminal, we're going to treat it as a negative current. So we're going to write this as negative 2. And the voltage we know is just going to be 20 volts. I'm just going to write 20. Now when you start to solve this, the power in the 2 amp source is going to be negative 40 watts. Now because this is a negative power, we know that this particular element, which is a 2 amp source, is going to be supplying power. I'm just going to write supplied. So this is our answer for the power in the 2 amp source. Now you can do a quick check to make sure that your answer is correct because we know the power absorbed must equal to the power supplied. Or you can just sum up all of the powers and you should get zero. So if I was to add up all of these powers right here, I'm going to get 12 plus 28 minus 40. Or you can say plus negative 40. When you sum all of these powers, you're going to get 0 watts. Therefore, we know these answers should be correct.
All right, let's do another question. So we know what the question says, find the power in each element and tell whether it is either absorbed or delivered. Let's start with this one, right? When we look at this particular element, we know the power of, I'm just gonna call it element one, is gonna equal to the current times the voltage. Now the current in this particular situation is going to be four amps. And we know it's four amps because we have a current source that is providing four amps of current in this circuit. And this is the only current source we have. So we know that in this circuit, the current that's going to be flowing through each element is going to be four amps. So we have four amps and the voltage is going to be eight volts. When we solve for this, the power is going to be 32 watts. And because it's a positive power, we know it's going to be absorbing. I'm just going to write absorbed. This is our answer for element one. Okay, let's do element two, which is this source right here. Now, when we look at this source, some of us might get confused and be a little nervous. But this source is very easy to understand. But I don't want you to be nervous when you see a source like this, right? This source is just a current control voltage source. So we must be able to be comfortable when dealing with dependent sources, right? So remember, this is a voltage source, but it is going to be controlled by the current. And in this particular case, that current is IX. So what we have to do now is we should then find what is IX. Well, in the diagram, we know Ix is the current, and we know the current is going to be four amps. And this makes sense for this particular circuit because this is a series circuit. And because we have a current source of four amps, we know the current Ix should also equal four amps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna solve for this particular voltage before I continue the problem. So I know we're gonna have two, Ix is going to be 4 amps. I'm just going to write 4. When we solve for this, 2 times 4 is going to give us 8. Therefore, we know 2Ix is going to be 8 volts. All right, now let's solve for this. So the power flowing through 2Ix, which is the current control voltage source, We know that's the formula, current times voltage. Therefore, we can now plug in what we know. We know I, which is the current, because it's a series circuit, is just gonna be four amps. So we have four multiplied by the voltage, which is eight volts. When we solve for this, the power equals two I X. Four times eight is gonna give us 32 watts. And I know most times when we see a, a source, we automatically think that it's gonna be a negative power. Well, that's not always the case. Remember, if the current is flowing into the positive terminals, then it's going to be a positive power that we're gonna get, which means that that particular element is going to be absorbing power. So we're gonna have 32 watts absorbed. This is our answer for our second element. Now let's do our third element, which is this four amp current source. So we have the power in the four amp current source. The power therefore is gonna be the current, which we know is gonna be four amps. But before we just put in four, I want us to always remember something. Yes, four amps is the magnitude of the current. That's correct, right? But when we look at this particular situation, the current is flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Because that is the case, we're just going to assume this is a negative current, right? And because we're going to assume it is a negative current, when we start to plug in the value for the current for the four amp source, we must write negative Four. and the voltage is 16 volts so we're just going to write 16 
When you multiply these two, negative 4 times 16 is going to give you negative 64 watts. Now we know because we have a negative power, that means power is being delivered or supplied. I'm just going to write delivered. So this is going to be your answer for the 4 amp current source. Now just to check your answers, we know the power supplied must equal to the power absorbed. So we can just add up all of these powers if you like. We can say 32 plus 32 plus negative 64 which is going to give us 0 watts. Therefore everything looks good. Remember, if the current is flowing from the positive to negative terminal, we're going to assume a positive current. If the current is flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, we're going to assume a negative current.